at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the latest on the search for a local three-year-old and now a six-figure reward being offered for her safe return. Plus, we'll have reaction now that a former Minnesota police officer was found guilty in the death of Dante Wright. And back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. All right, we can see a little bit more this morning than we did yesterday morning. And our own Justin Horn is tracking Santa. We're going to be checking in with him in just a few moments. All right, speaking of which, you know, it's not Christmassy outside. I kind right. of had that Halloween type yeah. view when I was driving. So, Justin, please tell us. This is going to clear up, right? <laughs> it, it is going to clear up. We'll see some sun today, but it's still not going to feel very Christmas like because those temperatures are going to be so warm. But look, we're bringing Christmas to you. We've got the, the vibe going we do. in here, right? I wanted to give yeah. you a shout out because your tie from a distance. I was like, why is Justin wearing blue? But if you yeah. zoom in, <laughs> it's actually Christmas trees on top mm -hmm. of a Christmas vacation. It's card. really small. You would never be able to see it, but there is Christmas trees on here. And shout out to Sarah Spivey. This is a Christmas gift. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, feeling very festive today. Yes, we are tracking Santa. We're going to have the latest on that coming up in just a little bit. We'll find out where he is, where he's going as he makes his way across the world. Meantime, here we are dealing with the fog, as Jaffney pointed out. The visibility is down about a, a quarter of a mile in some spots. Port S.A., Stinson, New Braunfels. The airport's still doing okay, but uh, we'll see some off and on patchy fog this morning. The rest of the area looks pretty good, too. So it's mainly right there around San Antonio. Temperatures are in the upper 50s, close to 60, very warm, above average for this time of year, as you know. And the afternoon highs will be right there, too. Uh, we're thinking 78 this afternoon. Yesterday, we got up to 71. So it will be a little bit warmer today. We'll have the clouds early. And then by noontime, I think the sun's starting to pop out. We get lots of sun uh, later, uh, later today. And it gets even warmer for Christmas Day. We're going to have all of that. And again, we're tracking Santa for you coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. We are entering day five in the search efforts for three-year-old Linda Keel. Now, San Antonio police tell us day four brought no significant updates, but the reward money and hope of finding her is rising fast. The Islamic Center of San Antonio raising $100,000. Crime Stoppers now offering $50,000 for any information that may lead to little Lena's whereabouts. Authorities still actively looking as well as checking in with nearby businesses, searching apartments at the last place she was seen, the Villas del Cabo apartment complex. FBI showed up and they searched my apartment, looking under the bed, under the couch, outside, and they had this questionnaire going through questions. Would you be willing to give a DNA sample if needed? At this time, police still treating this case as a missing person and not a child abduction crime. To another unfortunate story this morning, a family of three are homeless after fire ripped through their southwest home last night. Fire officials say flames broke out just after 6 p.m. at a duplex off Colglazer Avenue near Dollarhide Avenue. An adult and two children were inside at the time but made it out safely. As for the home, it's done. The fire left 80 grand in damage. It also left a nearby unit with smoke damage. Guilty on all counts after about 27 hours of deliberation, around four days. The jury in the Kim Potter trial reaching a unanimous verdict. That's why CNN's Chris Gwynn is in Minnesota with the reaction inside and outside the courthouse. We, the jury on the charge of manslaughter in the first degree, find the defendant guilty. The mother of Dante Wright says she felt every single emotion running through her body as the verdict against her son's killer was read. I kind of let out a yelp because it was built up in the anticipation. Former Brooklyn Center, Minnesota police officer Kimberly Potter remaining stoic in court Thursday, a stark difference from one week ago when she broke down on the stand. I'm sorry it happened. <laughs> The 26-year police veteran says she mistook her gun for her taser when she fatally shot Wright, a 20-year-old black man, during a traffic stop. Judge Regina Chu denied the defense's request to allow Potter to go home before her February sentencing. I cannot treat this case any differently than any other case. Her bail revoked. Potter will instead spend Christmas in custody. Outside the courthouse, demonstrators carrying Black Lives Matter signs and portraits of Wright celebrated the verdict. We have a degree of accountability for Dante's death. 
Accountability is not justice, but accountability is an important step, a critical, necessary step on the road to justice for us all. In Minneapolis, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. And in Colorado, a district attorney plans to ask for a reduced sentence for the semi-truck driver who's convicted of a deadly crash back from 2019. A 26-year-old Rahel Aguilar Medeiros driving a semi-truck on I-70 in Colorado when the brakes failed. The crash leading to a fiery 28-car pileup, ending with four people dead. Now, he was found guilty, sentenced to 110 years in prison. At the sentencing, the judge in the case said he was bound to mandatory minimum sentencing laws in Colorado. Now, there will be a hearing on Monday asking the court to reconsider the sentence. The Colorado's governor and his office now reviewing an application for clemency for Aguilar. To the pandemic now, healthcare workers with COVID-19 no longer need to isolate for 10 days. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control now says workers with COVID-19 who are asymptomatic can return to work after seven days with a negative test. It also says workers who are fully vaccinated, including a booster, do not need to quarantine after high-risk exposures. That isolation time can be cut even further if there are staffing shortages. The agency hopes the new guidelines will limit the effects of healthcare staffing shortages caused by COVID-19. Time now, 436, 58 degrees out. That's right, still ahead. Sometimes boxed wines don't get the same respect that bottled <laughs> wines do. This morning, we're checking out which ones are the best. And you got to pull out the wine to celebrate. Huge Spurs win last night, taking on the Lakers. And this was kind of bittersweet because the Lakers, they were supposed to be saying goodbye to the Staples Center name. Well, they left with an L. We're going to have the highlights coming up. And right now, we're taking a live look across the city. It's clearing up right now. We're going to get in more details coming up after this break. And we are checking in across the country, across the world. People are celebrating Christmas Eve. We have our Christmas Eve attire on. We're going to be checking in throughout the morning. Justin Horn tracking Santa. Spurs go after two days rest in Los Angeles. San Antonio Spurs hoping to end their four game road trip with a win taking on LeBron and the Lakers last night. Let's roll the highlights. Starting off hot, Doug McDermott a pair of early threes giving the Spurs a one point lead. LeBron James, 36 points, nine boards for the Lakers on the night, but whoo, it was KBD scoring a career high 30 points, leading the Spurs to a huge win over the Lakers last night. Final score from the Staples Center, one of the last games in the Staples Center, 138 to 110, the final event at the Staples Center under the 22-year-old arena's original name, the building changing their name to Crypto.com Arena, and go back to the Spurs, the third win in four games for the Spurs. They hit 18 threes. It was a big problem last season. They also completed a two-game sweep of the two LA teams, Clippers and the Lakers. Spurs win in back-to-back games for the first time, get this, since December 4th. And fun fact, the Spurs also played in the Lakers' final game when it was the Forum back in May of 1999. Throwing it back to 99, Tim Duncan scored 33 points in that game. San Antonio completed a four-game sweep of L.A. in the second round of the postseason. Greg Popovich, only in his third year as the head coach, the Spurs return home Sunday, taking on the Detroit Pistons. Speaking of here at home, giving you a behind-the-scenes look at the Alamo Dome as the crew start painting the field for the 2021 Valero Alamo Bowl. That is where it's actually going to be a great matchup. We got the Oklahoma Sooners taking on... Ooh, Oregon, first ever appearance in the major sporting event here in San Antonio. The Ducks, Oregon Ducks, making their third appearance here. The game taking place Wednesday in the Dome with both teams led by interim coaches. The Sooners, they're going to be in San Antonio today. The Ducks coming here tomorrow. Pro football coverage. All, All right, right, from college to the pros. Dallas Cowboys, just three games left in the regular season, starting with the Washington football team this Sunday. Quarterback Dak Prescott and defensive end Demarcus Lawrence. They have a wager going on between the offense and the defense. It is touchdowns versus takeaways. We don't know what the offense or the defense will get exactly if they win the wager, but there's been talk of a trip, another talk of an incentive just to finish out the season and run through the playoffs when they clinch. Just a challenge between fellow teammates. Uh, 
you know, a little competition won't hurt. So uh, figured it was, you know, give it a good try to see if, you know, offense can uh, beat us on, on turnovers versus touchdowns. And, uh, you know, uh, defense won this one. You know, we'll see what they got this week. And talk about fight night. Mario Barrios looking to start 2022 with a big time win in a new weight class. Barrios will face former welterweight champion Keith Thurman in a 12 round welterweight showdown coming up Saturday, February 5th. The Mandela Bay Resort and Casino all the way in Vegas this is going to be another pay-per-view event this time through Premier Boxing Champions. Going back to the Cowboys, I'm pretty sure last night the 49ers beat the Titans. That is confirmed. So I think the Cowboys already clinched the playoffs. Look at that. I'm thinking about boxing. Yeah. Super exciting oh, entertainment, yeah. but they need to bring some UFC in there. I'm a UFC Ooh. person. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you heard her. Time now, 4.43, 58 degrees out. Still ahead, you may have had wine from a bottle, but what about wine from a box? Up next, we'll find out which ones are the best. And still not too late for some last minute Christmas shopping. This is really last minute. We have some first looks at the newest wave of shopping through, get this, live streaming. And welcome back this morning. There's a way that you can still do some very last minute Christmas shopping through live streaming. ABC's Zoreen Shaw talks about that in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, some last minute buying all at your fingertips. We're talking about the newest wave of shopping through live streaming. Hey, you're going to love it. What I love about live streaming is that it's a way for the consumers, the viewers to watch you try on and talk about products while having that immediate response with feedback with their questions. Players include emerging apps like Network, Pop Shop Live, and Super Great. It's similar to actual home shopping TV channels. There's a host who highlights products, but there are some major differences too. And guys, we are streaming on my own personal channel today. You can actually just be scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through TikTok and see an announcement that maybe your favorite tech products, maybe your favorite home products are going to go on deal. Coming up at 8 a.m., we'll have more on how this kind of shopping can make your life easier. With your GMA First Look, I'm Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, so it's a question that has, you know, been on the minds of Americans for so long. Is wine from a bottle really that much better than wine from a box? That's right. 12 on your size, Marilyn Moore's has some budget-friendly picks from taste testers who swirled and sipped 11 different boxed wines. I'm not a wine snob. Wine and spirits shop owner Cindy Coker says there's no need to turn your nose up at boxed wine. It's uh, delicious, it's convenient, and it has a handle. A boxed wine can be about half as expensive as wine in a bottle, which makes it a smart choice for parties. Consumer Reports' Angela Lashbrook isn't a sommelier, but she did just help evaluate 11 different boxed wines. Testers brushed up on their tasting skills, spoke to industry experts, hosted wine tastings in their homes, and smelled and sipped their way through a variety of wines. So we looked for how rich and fragrant the wine was before tasting. Then we wrote down any flavors we noticed, as well as how balanced the wine was, how complex it was, uh, brightness and depth. We also took note of the wine's finish. As with any respectable wine tasting, there were some disagreements. My personal favorite was actually the one that nobody else liked, which was the Jenny and Francois uh, Chardonnay. Many tasters found this Chardonnay sharp and almost metallic. However, Angela says if you prefer mineral-like dry whites, it may be worth a try. Among the favorites, this Beaujolais from Wineberry. Its pretty packaging is perfect for a party. Equally favored, this light-bodied Pinot Noir from Black Box, which one reviewer described as tasting fancy. Black Box also earned a best white wine pick with this Sauvignon Blanc. Its notes of grapefruit, tropical fruits, and green apple will appeal to almost any casual wine drinker, making it a great choice for a party. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. See, I will have a glass of wine mm. every once in a while, but yeah. I'm a basic person. I don't do the swivel. I just get like a little bitty, you know, bottle of something sweet. Right. And just, you know, Sip it out of a red clip. A 11 people, or people had to try 11 different wines. What a tough job. That is a tough job. <laughs> Speaking of tough jobs, Justin Horn out there tracking Santa this morning. No, my job's easy today. I yeah. mean, we're excited to, to follow Santa. We get to follow him wherever he goes. He's doing all the work. Uh, we've got the latest here. Now, here's the thing. He hasn't left the North Pole just yet, but we're told 
he will be leaving within the hour. So once he does, we'll be tracking him around the world, not only this morning, but basically all day today. We'll let you know exactly where he is, but uh, still getting those toys ready. We're getting excited, right? We're almost there. Is that a live look? It is. Okay. <laughs> I believe so. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the temperatures yesterday and where they were compared to the average. And this is pretty impressive, honestly. Across the country, just about everybody was above average yesterday, minus some spots there on the East Coast and a few on the West Coast. But you look at Texas, we were all above average. And not only that, we were 10 to 15, maybe even 20 degrees above average yesterday. Here in San Antonio, we were 8 degrees above average. So the clouds kept temperatures down a little bit, but I think we'll be in that 10 to 15 degrees above average range today. Uh, it's just uh, not December like at all. And not only that, not only is it uh, extremely warm, but we have some high wind warnings and red flag warnings across the panhandle where there could be some fire concerns today. So it, it's just not December like at all. Right now here in San Antonio, 57 degrees, some clouds developing. We don't have much fog, at least at the airport. You can see visibility looks pretty good. South southeasterly winds at about five miles per hour. There is fog though, as you get down towards Stinson. Port SA is down to about a tenth of a mile and Randolph at about five miles. New Braunfels reporting some fog. It's a small area here, but it does seem to be fairly dense. So be careful if you're traveling in that direction. This will kind of fluctuate a little bit through the morning. Temperatures are in the 50s, upper 50s here in town. You'll find some 60s in the hill country. These numbers too, well above average. And the dew points, 50s, 60s, it's fairly muggy out there. And it uh, certainly will be a warm afternoon. Now you look at the big picture here, there is uh, quite a bit of weather out west. Uh, we're continuing to see some heavy rain around Phoenix, some snow in the higher elevations of the Rockies. And uh, that's where it will all stay today. Our ridge pipe pressure is still there. And that's directing everything around Texas and keeping us nice and uh, toasty. And here's the uh, forecast temperatures today. We're thinking 78 here in San Antonio. Mid 80s in places like Abilene, Wichita Falls could set some records today for high temperatures. And then for Christmas Day, look at Laredo. Closing in on 90 degrees. Uh, 85 in Del Rio, that could be close to a record. 84 in San Angelo, we're going to 81 here in San Antonio. So the extended forecast. Uh, 81 tomorrow, 82 Sunday, so morning fog, clouds and drizzle possible each and every day. And then we go to afternoon sun and next week I, I was really looking for fun. I mean, today I was really trying <laughs> and it is still not there. This is so unusual to go this long without a cold front coming through here this time of year. But that is uh, where we stand. Maybe as we get into 2022, the first part, there could be a front to keep searching. We're going to keep looking. But some people are enjoying that, though. I love it. Okay. I love it. Warm, but I, I think it will go down as, uh, if not the warmest, the second warmest December on record. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully cold temps for January. Here's for hoping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Thanks, yep. Justin. Time now, 453, 59 degrees out. Coming up next, Spider-Man swings into another box office record, plus a slew of Hollywood stars get involved in a movie about climate change. Good morning and welcome back. Hollywood stars lining up to be in a climate change film, plus a huge milestone for Spider-Man. That's right. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason, Jason Nathanson. It's probably the most star-packed movie about climate change in history. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, Jonah Hill, Ariana Grande, Tyler Perry, and more star in Don't Look Up. Out today, a dark satire that Jennifer Lawrence hopes will make people laugh and think. Tyler Perry is, has a great way of saying it, that the comedy is kind of the anesthesia that helps before the surgery um, and kind of get the information across in a, in a, you know, fun and hilarious way. Don't Look Up, written and directed by Adam McKay, is streaming today on Netflix. Hello, Peter. Spider-Man swinging to the top of the Hollywood box office for 2021. Spider-Man No Way Home, now the top Hollywood release worldwide for the year, crossing the $800 million mark, putting it ahead of the James Bond film No Time to Die. It'll likely hit a billion dollars by the end of the year, the only film to do so in 2021. And a big Christmas Eve birthday for Ricky Martin, the singer and actor turning 50 today, while live with Kelly and Ryan co-host Ryan Seacrest is 47. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
Well, happy birthday to Ryan Seacrest. I got to get me one of those sweaters. All right. <laughs> Super cute. Time now, 457, 59 degrees out. Still ahead on GMS, hey, two major U.S. airlines have been forced to proactively cancel some Christmas Eve flights due to the fast-spreading Omicron variant. And taking a live look out at the roadways with TransGuide. People out and about this morning. Steven Cavazza is now in the building. We're going to check in with him after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The search continues for three-year-old Lena Kill, and the cash reward has gone up. We'll tell you what we know coming up next. And taking a live look out there on your Merry Christmas Eve. Yes, it's still foggy, but it's okay. Santa's getting ready to head out. Good morning. Like Japanese was saying, it is Christmas Eve. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. You mentioned it at the start of 430. It looks more sco uh, spooky out yes. there than it does jolly. Yes, very creepy. I was driving and I was thinking about <laughs> Michael Jackson's thriller <laughs> going on. So it did not look like Christmas outside at all. No. So Justin, you checking Michael Jackson or are you checking Santa? <laughs> uh, we're we're going to follow Santa as much as I do like Michael Jackson. We were going to follow hey, Santa. Michael Jackson had a good song. <laughs> Is coming to town. That's true. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, facts are facts. <laughs> Very true. Hey, uh, breaking news, guys. He just looked. Santa has left the North Pole. He I just did. left. So we're going to be tracking him all morning where he uh, where he goes across the world. He's got a lot of work to do all day today before he gets here to San Antonio tonight. Let's first start with a picture, though. KSAC Connect. Uh, we have an ugly sweater section. I wouldn't say this is ugly. I mean, this is this is a cool sweater. Uh, we uh, got this picture in just a little bit earlier. Like it? That's very festive. And uh, she's wishing everyone a happy and safe holiday season. Same to you. Thank you so much for submitting that picture. And if you have any Christmas pictures you want to send in, KSAC Connect is a great way to do it. We'll uh, pop them up here on Good Morning San Antonio. Uh, this is yesterday's pollen count. This was not so nice. Mountain Cedar jumped into the very high category yesterday for the first time, 10,080. Molds are at 190. We'll get that pollen count in here in a couple of hours and we'll get it updated for you. Visibility is down in some spots here across Bear County, Port S.A. Stinson, namely uh, where the, the fog is really thick right now. It stretches down into Pleasanton too, but just a little area here. We could see a little bit more before it's all said and done this morning. And just like yesterday, clouds stick around through about lunchtime. Then we get the sun the af this afternoon that will push temperatures up. Uh, to some pretty warm levels. 60 right now in Kerrville, 58 Hondo, 60 at Catula, 58 in Gonzales. Forecast for today, close to 78 this afternoon. There's the sun, mostly sunny skies. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We got clear sailing for Santa. But do we have clear sailing for those out on the roads this morning, Stephen? It's a good question, Justin. You know, Santa may just be leaving the North Pole, but I have a gift for our viewers at home already. 35 North at Loop 410, we do have some quiet roads, except for that fog. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Uh, you know, as I was driving into work this morning on I-10, I didn't see a lot of people out there. There's 37 at Jones Avenue. Uh, not a lot of activity out there, so this is some great news, especially if you have to head out the door for whatever reason. But we're hoping a lot of folks can stay at home and just enjoy the morning and uh, enjoy the show today because we don't have a whole lot to talk about road because what roadways that is loop 410 at Callahan. Although it is a little foggy out there, if you have to head out for whatever reason, make sure that you are driving carefully. Use those low beams uh, taking you right to the map. We can show you that we are seeing some quiet roads. However, when we take you right to that road weather map, if we can get there. Uh, I'm going to jump right over here. We see some of that fog uh, right over 410 and 1604. So again, if you're driving out of town or driving maybe into San Antonio a little bit later this morning, use some caution. Let's take you to those inbound times because like I said, if you have to come into San Antonio. You're not going to find any delays at this hour. 25 minutes from Bernie to downtown on I-10. 281 southbound. We're looking at 27 minutes at this hour and 26 on 35 from New Braunfels to San Antonio. So not too bad for Christmas Eve. We're going to continue to keep a close eye on the roads, but as always, make sure you keep your eyes on the road as well. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Day five of the search efforts for three-year-old Lena Keel. Still no leads, no clues as to the child's whereabouts. That's right. Day four brought no significant update, according to the San Antonio Police Department. But reward money is hope in hope of finding her is rising fast. Our Jonathan Coto joins us live from the apartment community where Lena was last seen. Good morning, Jonathan. 
Good morning, Daphne. We know the Islamic Center of San Antonio has now raised $100,000 and Crime Stoppers is offering $50,000 for any information that can lead to Lena's whereabouts. Now, we know authorities have been actively looking and searching and checking in with nearby businesses and going from apartment to apartment. But the scene this morning is a little bit differently. We know two days ago, officers were searching every vehicle entering and leaving the premises. Well, that's not the case this morning. We do know three-year-old Lena disappeared on Monday from these apartment complexes located on the 9400 block of Frederick Road near Medical Center on the city's northwest side. Lena was at a playground inside of this apartment community with her mother and other children when she disappeared. Police are urging folks who were here at this apartment community between 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to contact SAPD if they have what they're calling actionable tips. Now, Lena was last seen wearing a black jacket, red dress, and black shoes. And also, Max Jaffney police are asking if anyone had any communication or spoke with Lena or her family at any point that Monday to please contact police at 207-7660 as soon as possible. Reporting live from the city's northwest side, Jonathan Coulter, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. A dishonorable discharge is given to a Bear County sergeant for allegedly acting, acting inappropriately during a sting operation. And now KSA 12 defenders are reporting that that same sergeant, Anthony Daggett, is retiring in lieu of a termination this week. A 22-year veteran was placed on administrative leave on Monday. Two sources familiar with the investigation told the defenders Daggett is accused of tipping off the owner of a massage parlor involved in the sting operation including telling the owner the make and model vehicle officers were using to watch the business. Now to the latest in the pandemic, the FBA, FDA approving two separate treatment pills that have been found to fight the COVID infection. However, the Omicron variant is causing disruptions in air travel. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Omicron variant surging across the country, now affecting airlines for the millions taking to the sky for the holidays. Two major airlines are now forced to proactively cancel some Christmas Eve flights. Overnight, United Airlines canceling over 100 flights, Delta also canceling around 90 flights, pointing to the spike in COVID cases limiting crew availability. We follow all the protocols and feel pretty safe. The U.S. daily seven-day case average has more than doubled in the last three weeks, already surpassing the Delta variant's peak. New data out of the UK suggests patients who test for the Omicron variant may be 50 to 70 percent less likely to be hospitalized. These early reports, they do suggest that the risk of hospitalization is lower than Delta, and that of course is, is good, that's encouraging news. This week, the FDA approving two antiviral pills meant to fight a COVID-19 infection. One from Merck, which was found to be less effective, reducing severe illness by 30 percent, and one from Pfizer, reducing those chances by 89 percent. Both will require a prescription. I think in the long run, it's a game changer. I think I don't use that term lightly. I think it's going to end up making a really enormous difference. The White House says it's purchased 10 million Pfizer treatment courses and 3 million Merck courses, but they won't be available for months. The same problem seen with testing. Long lines across the country filled with people, sometimes waiting for hours looking for a test. We have not been able to find rapid tests or any tests really anywhere. The Biden administration promising a half a billion tests, but they won't be available until after the holidays. The White House acknowledging the scarcity. We're not where we need to be on testing. No one is saying we are. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. And speaking of COVID, here are the latest COVID numbers here at home in Bear County. 376 new cases. That's up more than 200 since the previous report. That brings our seven-day moving average to 319. Four new deaths to report. Meanwhile, 200 people in our local hospitals. That's an increase of about 18 people, 77 of them in the ICU, 44 on ventilators. Time now, just about 5.09, 59 degrees out. Still ahead, all of our Tesla fans, listen up. We'll tell how, te how Tesla is changing the way games work in its vehicles following a probe by federal regulators. And next, a local artist taking her creativity to the San Antonio sidewalks. Taking a live look across the city, looking beautiful right now. Traffic's moving smoothly. Merry Christmas Eve, everyone.
Good morning and welcome back. A local artist taking her creativity to the streets, or more accurately, taking it to the sidewalks. Shay Daniel Youngblood sets up her easel around town and starts painting whatever catches her eye. KSAT photojournalist Luis Fuegos shares her story. So this is my favorite thing to do in the world and it's called plein air painting. It's just painting in the open air or outdoors. I was just walking around kind of looking for a subject matter and that little pink umbrella over there um, next to all those beautiful flowers and that wonderful palm tree caught my eye. So that's kind of the focal point of what I'm doing. A lot of times people will honk. I know one of the Via bus drivers, so sometimes he'll pass by like that. But a lot of times people will stop, pull over and ask me what I'm doing. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of visiting that goes on. About five years ago, I took a plein air painting class. I had never done that before. I had painted since I was 18, but not like that. Nothing that regular and nothing like that. And um, so I took a class because I knew it would make me a better painter really fast, and it did. The light changes, so just every kind of sensory experience you can have uh, occurs. So there's just like so much happening, you know? And what you're trying to do is kind of capture all that. I love being outside and I really love just kind of like the everyday scenes. I just can sort of like tune everything out and hone in on what it is that is going on. Sometimes I feel joy. Sometimes I feel just like fatigue or heat, you know, lots of, lots of things, but mostly in the zone. It's my happy place. It's just like a connection. I feel like it makes me part of this city. First and foremost, it's always beautiful to see someone take their passion to the streets and share it with the community. But second of all, did you see that artwork? Oh my goodness. Gorgeous. That was impressive. Great story by Luis also. Big shouts to him. And yeah, put that on the market. That was, mm -hmm. oof. All right, time now, 514, 59 degrees out. Still ahead, how a popular Amazon device can be used to track Santa this year. Welcome to Allstate, where you can pay a little less and enjoy the ride a little more. Now get new lower auto rates with Allstate because better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click or call for a lower auto rate today. Even after you sanitize, every touch can leave new bacteria behind. Microband 24 keeps killing 99.9% .9 of bacteria touch after touch for up to 24 hours. Use the sanitizer four out of five doctors would use in their own homes. Microband 24. St. Jude helped raise the overall childhood cancer survival rate from 20% to 80%. What's that mean? A healthy future for kids like you. Visit stjude.org or help wherever you see the St. Jude logo. In today's Tech Bytes, a gaming change for Tesla. The company will block games on video screens in some of its cars when they're moving. The move follows a probe announced by federal regulators. Tesla will send out a software update to owners so they can lock the passenger play feature. For the 66th year in a row, NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, is tracking Santa Claus's progress. In addition to its website, there's also an app, and Alexa can be programmed to track Santa. NORAD says 11 million visitors checked its Santa site last year. Finally, Pokemon Go is already looking forward to New Year's, the game's event to welcome 2022 players gives players the chance to capture several costume Pokemon. You can also dress your avatar up in New Year's gear. Celebration starts at 10 p.m. next Friday night in your local time zone. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Max, it might just be me, mm -hmm. but I just feel like the whole Tesla thing is, is common sense. Yeah, like, no. Uh, <laughs> Steven Cavazzo was, was like livid watching the TV. How could anyone even <laughs> allow that? I can't be livid. It's it's Christmas Eve. That's but true. But I will say, I, it does. It, you can't do that when you're driving. I mean, <laughs> maybe when you're parked somewhere. But I would prefer to play video games at home right. if I played them. But uh, Pokemon Go may be the better choice for mm. you if you'd like to get out. Right? Not in the roadways. I was gonna say, not
while driving. <laughs> no, no, because then we'd have a whole mess of problems to talk about. And thankfully today we don't. Uh, let's take a quick look at the roadways as we are getting this morning. Christmas Eve morning started, I should say 37 at Carolina. It's super quiet this morning and and I really don't spot a lot of problems out there and we are not mad about that. We love to see some quiet roads and for any of our drivers that need to head out early this morning, just watch out because we do have some road debris that's been detected right here of 1604 westbound at Blanco, uh, not causing any issues as you just saw from those trans guide shots. It's been a very, very quiet start. So again, just watch out, especially when we have some fog in the area as we take a wider look at our road weather map. We see some of that down there. So again, just watch out, use those low beams and make sure you take it slow on the roads. But if you have to head to the gas station, maybe for a quick trip out of town, we do have these gas prices from AAA today. As of right now, they are reporting the average gas price in Bear County is 265 around the state. We're looking at 287 and around the country 328. So again, if you need to head to the pump, make sure that you watch this newscast or take some notes. This is what you can expect. But right now we expect some quiet road, just a little foggy out there. Uh, my nose is a little bit shiny. Maybe I can help guide Santa's sleigh if he wants to pick me up. <laughs> real quick, Justin. I don't know. Maybe Nicely not. Done. Yeah, the, the, there is some fog out there. So yes. Rudolph, Rudolph is, is going to get some uh, going to get some work. Maybe. Oh, OK, go oh, up. Where was he last seen, Justin? <laughs> I was so uh, you know I like to think I know geography pretty well, uh, but this this is a new one. Um, according to NORAD, Santa was last seen and help me out, Petro Pavlovsk, Kamachsky, Russia. Nice, hey! we'll give it to you. Hey, Pass with flying one. colors. Thank you. Uh, he's on his way to Wake Island. He's already delivered 95 million presents, which wow. is incredible. Man, he moves fast. He's quick. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> Uh, he's got a lot to go to, so he's moving fast, and uh, we're going to continue to track him through the morning, through the afternoon, through the evening. He'll be obviously here to San Antonio a little bit later tonight. So that's the latest on the Santa Tracker there. Uh, what about a nod of your nice forecast? What are we dealing with today? Uh, nice, yeah. I'd say it's afternoon sun if you like that sort of thing. Uh, some quiet Texas travel, so that's a good thing. On the not so nice list, it's going to be about 15 degrees above average. We've got the morning fog and drizzle, as we pointed out, and it's muggy. So trade-off right uh, where we stand so we're gonna we're gonna say it's somewhere towards the naughty side I mean this is subjective but this is what we're thinking for for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day uh, by tomorrow morning as we're uh, opening presents whatever plans you may have temperature is gonna be right around 60 I know that's not uh, you know what you would expect Christmas morning but that's what we're gonna deal with cloudy somewhat foggy southerly winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour and the month of December has just been incredible all the way around. We've been above average most of the month, only about four days where we were below average and we weren't that far below average. Uh, for the month, we're about 8.6 degrees above the average. And as I mentioned earlier, I think this December could finish as one of the warmest we've ever seen here in San Antonio. I think that probably comes as no surprise after the last couple days. 60 right now, South Southeasterly winds at about five miles per hour. There is some fog out there, especially southern Bear County, stretching down towards uh, Atascosa County. That's really the only area right now, but we could see the fog spread a little bit as we get later into the morning. 50s and 60s to go around. It's a mild morning. You know the humidity is up. Dew points are in the 50s and 60s too. But if you are doing some traveling, as we said on the naughty or nice list, uh, most of Texas is doing just fine. It's all out west where you're going to find the more active weather, this ridge of high pressure, which is sort of unusual to be impacting our weather this time of year. Uh, you would expect this maybe uh, late summer, <laughs> early fall, but uh, that's again, it's just the pattern we're in. And by tomorrow, we're expecting to be in the low 80s for Christmas Day. Not a record, but well above average. Here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 82 on Sunday, 79 Monday, 80s next week. We'll still get some of those morning low clouds. And overnight lows very consistent right there around 60 degrees each and every day, guys. You know, I wonder if Santa has built in portable fans in his little oh. suit. Well, that's yeah. a lot of clothes to wear. Well, I mean, he's got to go to the southern hemisphere, too, and it's it's hot down there. Mm -hmm. So it's he's he's prepared for everything, I think. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Horan, our Santa expert. Thank you. 524, 59 degrees out. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, we're checking out this year's most streamed songs. Plus, why Coldplay has decided to stop recording in 2025. Good morning and welcome back. This morning we are checking out which artists had the most streamed songs all year long. CNN Douglas Hyde has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute.
Olivia Rodrigo, BTS, and Cardi B had the most streamed songs of 2021. Rodrigo's Driver's License was Spotify's top tune of the year, BTS's Dynamite led Apple Music's list, and Cardi B's Up took the top spot on Pandora. You're too old to be a rookie, too green to be a pro. So why in the world would I give you this shot? American Underdog tells the real-life story of Pro Football Hall of Famer Kurt Warner, who went from stocking shelves at a grocery store to winning a Super Bowl. Star Zachary Levi says he thinks the film is reaching audiences at exactly the right time. You know, to come out on Christmas Day and tell an inspirational, true inspirational story that's got faith and family and football and all, you know, all those other things, it's super groovy. Coldplay frontman Chris Martin tells the BBC that the band will stop recording music together in 2025. But all is not lost, Coldplay fans. He says they'll continue to tour. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. You're a Coldplay fan? Uh, yeah, I like Coldplay. That was a jam, but so was uh, Olivia Rodrigo. Mm. Nothing but respect. Exactly. All right, time now, 529, 59 degrees out. Still ahead on GUSA, severe weather turns deadly in parts of the country. We'll have the latest on the areas impacted. Plus, well, we'll tell you what you need to know about an important recall regarding a bunk bed that can be found at several popular retailers. Day five and search efforts continue for three-year-old Lena Kiel. We'll tell you what we know coming up next. And taking a live look outside with live cam. Still a bit foggy, but hey, it's Merry Christmas Eve, so it's always a good morning. And good morning to you. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. As you took a look out there, it didn't feel like Christmas Eve. Right, it didn't. It was actually, I didn't, I had to turn the air conditioner on. Oh, <laughs> so. 59 degrees, Justin Horn. Are we going to cool down at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> look at that ball. Listen, we got to generate our own Christmas cheer, okay? Because Mother Nature is not playing along here. But uh, we'll, we'll get into Christmas cheer. We'll, we'll get everyone into Christmas cheer this morning because uh, it, it is going to be a nice day. There is that. We're going to see some blue skies later this afternoon. We'll get rid of some of this fog and cloud cover. 60 degrees right now. Dew point is at 59. South southeast Julie winds at about five miles per hour. Temperatures right there around 60 degrees. So, yes, this is well above average for. Uh, Christmas Eve, 60 Catula, 59 Bevo, 58 right now in Gonzales. There's like some of the fog. We've had some of that, especially in Southern Bear County, also in Atascosa County, but starting to see it spread a little bit more. New Braunfels reporting some fog. Kerrville, we've seen the visibility come down a little bit there. We'll see if the fog really starts to kick in here within the next hour. Forecast. 69 noontime, we're starting to lose the clouds, and then we're up around 78 this afternoon. We'll call it mostly sunny. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, and as you might have guessed, it'll be mild for Christmas morning as well. We are tracking Santa, by the way. We'll have the latest on that coming up in just a bit. But Stephen, City Cam <laughs> doesn't look so bad. What are you seeing on some of your traffic cameras here? Any fog? Uh, yeah, we see a little bit uh, spread out, Justin. We're not seeing it in every shot like we saw yesterday or maybe the day before. Quiet roadways, great way to start the day or Christmas Eve. I, keep, I can't believe we're already here at uh, Christmas Eve, but check out US 90 at Callahan. Uh, very difficult to make out anything. Uh, we see some fly, we see a vehicle out there, but uh, not looking too bad on most of these shots. 410 at Broadway, traffic moving smoothly in a lot of these areas, so you're not going to encounter any big problems for your Christmas Eve drive if you have to head out the door in the next few moments, but we're hoping you can stay at home. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because uh, just keep in mind there's a stall here off I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. We're not seeing any delays in the east or westbound lanes of I-10, but either way, make sure you always move over or slow down. And in fact, coming into work today, I saw the text digital sign. Give the gift of courtesy when you see situations like that. Jumping over here, we still have this debris off 1604 westbound at Blanco, not causing problems, but watch out because again, you want to give yourself plenty of time uh, if you you're heading out of town, but when we have these situations, you got to be extra careful out there. Let's check out those inbound times. If you are traveling into San Antonio from any of these areas, for instance, on I-10 looking pretty green from Seguin to the downtown San Antonio area with 30 minutes at this hour, 24 minutes coming in from Lavernia to downtown. And if you're traveling from Floresville, we got 31 minutes for you. So not too bad, but as we take one last look around town, it's looking pretty good. So we'll have more uh, coming up in the late next few minutes on GMSA guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now to the search for Lena Keel. There's a now a combined reward of $150,000 for any information that might lead to the child's whereabouts. Jonathan Coto joins us live from the apartment community where Lena was last seen. Good morning, Jonathan. 
Good morning, Jaffney. That's right. No significant update and unfortunately no sign of Lena anywhere. And although the scene out here is a little bit differently uh, different compared to just a day ago, meaning we're not seeing that heavy police presence inspecting every car entering or leaving the property, the search continues. We do know the three-year-old went missing on Monday here from this apartment community located on the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road. Again, that's near Medical Center on the city's northwest side. And authorities are still actively looking as well as checking in with nearby businesses and searching apartments at the Villas del Cabo complex where Lena was last seen. FBI showed up and they searched my apartment looking under the bed, under the couch, outside, and they had this questionnaire going through questions. Would you be willing to give a DNA sample if needed? Max, Max Jaffney again at this time, we're reminding the public if they have any information that can help find this little girl, you're asked to call SAPD's missing crime unit at the number on your screen. That's 210-207-7660. And again, it's important to mention SAPD is still treating this as a missing person, not a child abduction case. Reporting live from the city's northwest side, Jonathan Cotton, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, and when we turn to weather, calm and quiet here at home, but severe weather has made for some hazardous driving conditions in a lot of the country. And CNN's Reed Binion reports the poor conditions led to fatalities in one state and crashes involving dozens of vehicles in another. I saw an explosion. What I saw, I will remember forever, that's for sure. A motorist recounting the terrifying moments that played out on an icy freeway in Wisconsin Thursday. Authorities had to shut down a roughly 25 mile stretch of Interstate 94 in both directions after multiple crashes involving about 40 vehicles, including a number of tractor trailers. Officials say icy conditions caused by freezing rain are to blame. According to Wisconsin State Patrol, some individuals were hospitalized with minor injuries, but no deaths were reported. Sadly, that wasn't the case in California. California, where two people died Thursday when the car they were in became trapped and submerged in an underpass that flooded amid heavy rain. It's very shocking. My heart goes out to their families. Authorities say crews were able to rescue two people from another vehicle under the overpass, but were unable to save two others. The water was rising so fast. Uh, conditions were changing so rapidly. Even for, for first responders, they, they, it became too dangerous for them, so they had to retreat. Elsewhere in California, floodwaters had sections of the 101 looking more like a waterway than a highway, prompting authorities to shut parts of it down for several hours. I'm Reed Binion reporting. And speaking of travel, two major airlines canceling flights just before Christmas Eve. United Airlines said that they had to cancel some flights because of the Omicron variant of COVID. Uh, the airline said the nationwide spike in cases this week it had a direct impact on its flight crews and the people who run the operations. The flight tracking site Flight Aware says United canceled more than 100 flights scheduled for today. Now, Delta Airlines also canceling flights. 93 Christmas Eve flights no longer in the books. According to FlySanAntonio.com, one was to Delta or one Delta flight to and from San Antonio from L.A. That has already been canceled for today. Drivers, listen up. The blast at that oil refinery in Baytown could push gas prices even higher. At least four workers were injured in that blast. The facility is one of America's largest refineries, and the accident could hamper output for months. The average price for a gal gallon of regular gas now stands at $3.29 per gallon. That's down 11 cents from a month ago. However, prices are still up about 47 percent from a year ago. Now, there is good news for drivers. For now, experts say that the incident won't immediately send gas prices higher. That's mostly because the next six weeks is historically the period of lowest demand for gasoline nationwide as winter weather and short daylight hours discourage people from driving. And it is Christmas Eve. Prince Charles will be celebrating the 12 days of Christmas reading from Charles Dickens classic A Christmas Carol. Starting tomorrow, Christmas Day, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall and other celebrities will be joining Prince Charles to spread a little holiday cheer. Each excerpt will be posted on Instagram for the 12 days of Christmas, which started December 25th. So viewers will also get a glimpse of the holiday decorations at Windsor Cla Castle and Clarence House along the way. Go back to your story with the gas prices. I had no idea. Me either. The next six weeks. 
lowest demand for gas. Exactly. So that means fill up while you can. That's true. All right, 540, 59 degrees out. Still ahead, you're soon going to have to pay a whole lot more to ride some of the most popular rides at Disney. We'll tell you how much coming up. And up next, top health experts weighing in on the effectiveness of the new Merck and Pfizer antiviral COVID pill treatments. Live look across the city, live cam on your Merry Christmas Eve. Still a bit foggy, but later on, soon to clear up, we'll keep in touch with Justin coming up. Good morning, welcome back. The FDA now authorizing a second pill to treat COVID-19. And as CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, while health experts are calling it a game changer, the news has left many with questions. As Omicron surges, there are two new tools to beat coronavirus. The FDA has authorized Merck's antiviral pill just one day after giving Pfizer's antiviral pill the green light as well. It's going to transform the way that we can treat COVID-19 and help to avert those dreaded hospitalizations, ICU stays, and death. Both pills can be taken at home. Pfizer's treatment, called Palaxivid, must be prescribed by a doctor and is a three-tablet dose taken twice daily for five days. Pfizer says its data showed the pill cut hospitalization risk or death by 88 percent if given to high-risk adults within five days of their first symptoms. This is a very, very, very potent uh, agent, and you're not going to need to go to a hospital to get an infusion like monoclonal antibodies. To be eligible for Pfizer's treatment, you must be considered high risk, must be 12 years or older, weigh at least 88 pounds, and have tested positive for the virus. Merck's antiviral pill, called Molnupiravir, treats high-risk adults and must be taken within five days of a positive COVID-19 test. Just like the Pfizer pill, health experts say the pills are not a substitute for vaccines. But the treatments are a potential game-changer, as the Omicron variant complicates the COVID crisis just days before Christmas. This is one of the few pieces of bright news this week. Preliminary testing does suggest that it still works against the Omicron variant, uh, which is terrific news. For today's Health Minute, I'm Jen Sullivan. Time now, 545, 59 degrees out. Coming up next, details on that important bunk bed recall that's been linked to at least one death. In your morning consumer headlines, parents, listen up. Nearly 40,000 bunk beds have been recalled due to potential entrapment and strangulation hazards. Angel line beds with angled ladders have a safety issue that could create a gap between the ladder step and the frame. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission issued the recall after a two-year-old in Ohio got caught in a gap in the bunk bed ladder and died from strangulation. Three models are included in the recall and were sold by Amazon, Walmart, OG, Commerce and Wayfair. Consumers should stop using the beds immediately and contact Angel Line for a free repair kit. All right, Disney fans, listen up. Zipping through some of the lines at Disneyland, it's going to cost you even more now. The California theme park increasing the Lightning Lane Pass from $7 to $18 for the Web Slingers and Radiator Springs Racers rides. That is a 157% price increase. Web Slingers, the if you can't tell by the name, is the Spider-Man themed ride in the new Avenger campus at Disney California Adventure Radiator Springs Racers. That is a driving ride at the Cars Land at the same park. I haven't been to Disney World or Disneyland in like 25 years. I don't think I'm going to back. I've anytime. never been. No kidding. I have never been. I've always gone to Universal Studios, oh. Island of the Adventure, stuff like that. But yeah, now I'm like, eh, I can pass on Disney. That's Even fair. more. <laughs> Time now, 549, 59 degrees out. That's right. Uh, all right. I've never been to Disneyland Universal Studios, so y'all are Ooh. one up, one up in me. They had the radiator racers. Any radiator racers well, on the yeah, road? Twenty twenty two New Year's <laughs> resolutions, more travel, hopefully right. in the future. So fingers crossed, right? But uh, Fiesta Texas, it's not too bad. So mm. are, are any any of our theme parks here really? But let's take a quick look at the roads because things have been quiet. If for some reason you have to head out the door in the next few moments, thirty five in New Braunfels, uh, foggy shot there. So just take it easy out on the road. We have not spotted big problems but we have spotted them. So just keep that in mind. You're going to want to be careful because we have some road debris right here off 1604 westbound at Blanco Road. It's been there for quite a while now. Uh, so just again, make sure you're driving carefully through that area. Taking a jump right over here, we have a stall of I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. That's been there for quite a while, but we're starting to get new stalls that are popping up here. Let's take a jump right over here to Loop 410 northbound at San Pedro Avenue. Another stall detected there. And a little bit further down, we have one there off I-35 northbound at Pine Street. So it looks like 
It has been the morning of stalls and as I zoom out of our map, I'm just noticing a crash just popped up there on 35 and it looks like we have another stall off US 90. We're getting a little bit busier than we would normally like, but looking around town 281 at bidders from what we're seeing at trans guide shots, it's still pretty quiet, but we'll keep track of those issues out on the roadways, guys. Justin Horn, you just went to Disney World, didn't you? Did I make oh, that so up? Uh, yes. Okay. So summer, yes. Got it. Friend things. Yeah, took the kid wow. Off. I really feel like I'm uh, on an island over here. <laughs> you know, but my dad is watching. Maybe I can yep. get my dad to take oh. me. There you dad. go. 2022. Mr. Cavazos, if yes. you're watching, Steven needs to go. <laughs> yes. Why not? Put the pressure on. Yes. Uh, let's uh, track Santa some more, guys. Uh, we are now in New Zealand. He's in New Zealand. He's already delivered oh. around 270 million presents. That's incredible. Ooh, He's making his way across the Pacific and now on the, uh, the island there of New Zealand, moving towards Auckland. And he'll be working his way, sort of zigzagging across, uh, across the earth, making his way towards uh, San Antonio a little bit later tonight. Hard turn there. All right, looking good, Santa. We'll continue to track. Uh, throughout the rest of the morning. And speaking of Christmas morning, where do we stand? 60 degrees is what we're thinking tomorrow. It will be cloudy, a little bit foggy, very similar to today, but well above average. So uh, warm stars were opening presents uh, tomorrow. That's that's what the forecast is looking like. Yesterday, it was warm not only here, but across a large portion of the country. Impressively so. I mean, these numbers are well above average, especially when you get into Texas. Most places we're looking at uh, temperatures 15 to 20 degrees above average. There were a couple of records set in places like Wichita Falls, down towards San Angelo as well. We didn't set any records, but we were about 8 degrees above our average yesterday. And it will be hot again today. There are red flag warnings, high wind warnings up across parts of the Texas Panhandle. High fire danger up there. It's been dry. They're going to get some gusty winds. Not a good combination. For us, we've got uh, cloudy skies, 60 degrees at the airport, 55 for Stinson and Kelly, 57 at Randolph. Not much wind out there and another morning where we are seeing some fog. New Braunfels reporting some fog, starting to see a little bit up around Kerrville. And then the thickest of the fog has been basically south of the airport and then down towards Pleasanton where visibility is about half a mile. Temperatures very mild, 50s and 60s dew points also in the 50s and 60s. And to see the dew point stay in the 60s pretty much through the entire forecast, very unusual for late December. So it stays somewhat warm and humid. All the active weather continues to be out west. There's some good snow for the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains. So some good skiing out there. But we're not feeling any of that energy here in Texas. Things remain quiet as our ridge pipe pressure uh, continues to stay in control. So forecast keeps temperatures above average each and every day, 80s for tomorrow and Sunday, closing in on some records there. Extended forecast, we'll go 81 Saturday, 82 Sunday. Some morning clouds possible next week too. Pretty similar setup, and we're right there around 80 each and every day. Very consistent, which you wouldn't expect for late December, guys. All right, Justin, thank you so much. Time now, 553, 59 degrees. All right. Here we go, hoping to give someone a Christmas present a day early. Take a look at those lotto numbers. Your pick three is 265, Fireball 6. Daily 4, 4229, Fireball 0. That's right, we next cut 1, 4, 5, 25, 26. And last we got the Texas two step 3, 13, 21, 34, and 15. Good morning and welcome back. Hope you're having a phenomenal Christmas Eve. A whole lot left here on GMSA. Time now, though, 556, 60 degrees. Still heading our next half hour. Talk about Spurs, Silver and Black taking on LeBron James and the Lakers. They did not disappoint. We're going to have the highlights from their last win in the Staples Center. We're going to explain why. And do you have old clothes that are just sitting in your closet that you don't want to wear anymore? Good news. We're going to explain how you can turn the clothes into cash. Plus, the search for three-year-old Lena Keel becoming more and more desperate. The reward for information that leads to her whereabouts continues to grow. We're going to have the latest on those search efforts. And of course, ooh, we see flashing lights out on the roadway. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos. Have what you need to know before you leave the door. Oh. 
Day five into the search for little Lena Kill and still no leads into her whereabouts and the cash reward is rising. Where police are at in their search efforts coming up next. And the Omicron variant of COVID-19 surging in parts of the country. So much so that flights are actually being canceled right in the middle of holiday travel. We're going to explain the latest. But first, we're going to take a live look outside with live cam. Of course, it is much clearer than what it started out earlier. But hey, you know, everybody's in a good mood today because it is a special day. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. As Japhne was saying, it is Christmas Eve. So good morning and Merry Christmas Eve. We're in our Christmas best. Yes, I got my uh, Christmas wrapping paper. Oh, on, I like so that. I made this. There you go. <laughs> so you know who else is wearing their Christmas best? We had to zoom in to see it. Justin Horn from mm -hmm. far, it looks like a blue tie, but it does. It's actually. It's uh, it's like a car with a Christmas tree on top. Okay. Mm. Shout out to Sarah Spivey, yes. Christmas gift. Okay, okay there, there we go. You're looking cool as a cat, man. Uh, cool as I a cat. I don't know. It's hard to see, but it's there. It is. There it is. Yeah, uh, you can see it there. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. I, that's uh, that's my my Christmas attire today. I like it. I do also have some Christmas socks, but we will we won't. Instagram. We won't. Shameless <laughs> yes. plug to the Instagram. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, one thing that people are have been sort of salty about last couple days. Mm -hmm. Pollen count, not pretty. Uh, Mountain cedar, very high, 10,080. That's where it came in yesterday. We'll see where it lands today. Uh, hopefully a little bit lower. That's a pretty big number. It feels like Mountain Cedar's kind of peaked early this year. Maybe we'll get through it quickly and then get out of it. We'll see. Molds are low at 190. And uh, looking at visibility fog, big problem this morning, especially southern parts of Bear County, western parts of Bear County. Visibility is down about a quarter of a mile. And there are some spots around New Braunfels, too, and Pleasanton where we're seeing that so that travel gets a little bit tricky when you get uh, visibility that low. Otherwise, we're not seeing a whole lot else around the area. So it's kind of centered there, southern Bear County. Temperatures 50s and 60s. It's a mild, somewhat muggy morning. And the forecast for today takes those temperatures up into the upper 70s. Uh, mostly sunny skies we will lose some of those clouds by lunchtime, 69 at noon, 76, 2 o'clock, 78, your high temperature, southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, and it promises to be warm when Santa arrives tonight. As we've been saying, we're following his every move. We're going to have the latest on where Santa is coming up here in just a bit, but let's go over to Steven now as he tracks what's going on on the roads. It looks like some of those trans guy cams are pretty foggy. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not a merry morning here on 35 at Division. You can see that we have some flashing lights out there. Justin, taking a closer look, uh, it's very hard to see exactly what we're looking at, but I can tell you that, that this is a crash that's been detected here off 35 at Division. Uh, vehicles are still able to make their way through there pretty easily, but of course, you got to take it slow whenever you see situations like this on the road, especially with conditions like this out on the roadway. So let's take you right to the map and see where that's detected off. Uh, it's in those northbound lanes right at Division. Avenue again, but check this out. The road weather map is still detecting some fog as you just saw from that trans guide camera. So again, move over or slow down. Give the gift of courtesy as text dot does say. Let's take a jump up here because we have a stall of 410 northbound at San Pedro Avenue. This has been there for quite a while, so hopefully the drivers receiving some assistance and they can get on their uh, get the, get the morning going here. But let's get a jump over here. Another stall of I 10 eastbound has been there for quite a while at UTSA Boulevard. Unfortunately, we thought that we'd see a quiet morning as we have Christmas Eve already starting, but looks like our roads are starting to get quite busy. But we do have some good news to report here. If you are traveling in from any of these locations, it's a pleasant drive still from Pleasanton on 37 with 28 minutes uh, coming in from Castroville to downtown. You're looking like you're in good shape on Highway 90 with 19 minutes and little time from Lytle on I 35 northbound with 17 minutes at this hour. But we're going to continue to watch this situation again here off 35 at Division. Max Jaffney. Thank you, Stephen. Day five of search efforts for three year old Lena Keel and still no leads, no clues as to where the little girl is. And Jonathan Cotto joins us live from that apartment community where Lena was last seen. Jonathan, we understand the reward money for information leading to her whereabouts is rising fast. Good morning, Max and Jaffney. That's correct. You know, we know the Islamic Center has been able to raise $100,000 for that reward, as well as Crime Stoppers now offering $50,000 for that reward for any information that can help in finding the little girl. Now, we do know Lena, three-year-old Lena, went missing here from the 
Las Vias del Cabo on Monday from uh, the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road near Medical Center, and that's on the city's northwest side. Now, Lena was at a playground inside of this apartment community with her mother and other children when she disappeared. And police are urging anyone who was here at this apartment between 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to contact SAPD if they have what they're calling actionable tips. Now, Lena was last seen wearing a black jacket, a red dress, and black shoes. And again, anyone who has spoken with Lena or her family that Monday are encouraged to, to call ACPD's missing person unit by dialing 210-204-7660. Reporting from the city's northwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the latest this morning, a fire ripping through a southwest side home, leaving a family of three shaky. without a house. Now, fire officials say flames broke out just before 6 p.m. yesterday. This is a duplex off of Cole Glazer Avenue near Dollarhide. An adult and two children inside at the time of the flames. Luckily, they made it out safely. As for the damages, the house being declared a total loss. In our morning headlines, guilty on all counts. After about 27 hours of deliberation across four days, the jury in the Kimberly Potter trial reached a unanimous verdict. That's right, CNN's Chris Wynn in Minnesota with reaction in and outside the courthouse. We, the jury on the charge of manslaughter in the first degree, find the defendant guilty. The mother of Dante Wright says she felt every single emotion running through her body as the verdict against her son's killer was read. I kind of let out a yelp because it was built up in the anticipation. Former Brooklyn Center, Minnesota police officer Kimberly Potter remaining stoic in court Thursday. A stark difference from one week ago when she broke down on the stand. I'm sorry it happened. <laughs> The 26-year police veteran says she mistook her gun for her taser when she fatally shot Wright, a 20-year-old black man, during a traffic stop. Judge Regina Chu denied the defense's request to allow Potter to go home before her February sentencing. I cannot treat this case any differently than any other case. Her bail revoked. Potter will instead spend Christmas in custody. Outside the courthouse, demonstrators carrying Black Lives Matter signs and portraits of Wright celebrated the verdict. We have a degree of accountability for Dante's death. Accountability is not justice, but accountability is an important step, a critical, necessary step on the road to justice for us all. In Minneapolis, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. Now to your consumer news online giant Amazon reaching a settlement deal with the National Labor Relations Board, making it easier for Amazon workers to unionize. Under this new agreement, Amazon will notify past and present warehouse employees of their rights to, rights to organize in the Amazon buildings without fear of retaliation. Experts say the decision will likely pave the way for unionizing at other large scale companies. And Tesla is reversing course and will no longer allow video games to be played while vehicles are in motion. Regulators say that the passenger play function could distract drivers, increasing the risk of a crash. Now to the latest in the pandemic, the FDA approving two separate treatment pills that have been found to fight COVID. That's right. This is the Omicron variant spreads across the U.S., now causing disruptions in air travel. ABC's Ike Joshi in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Omicron variant surging across the country, now affecting airlines for the millions taking to the sky for the holidays. Two major airlines are now forced to proactively cancel some Christmas Eve flights. We follow all the protocols and feel pretty safe. The U.S. daily seven-day case average has more than doubled in the last three weeks, already surpassing the Delta variant's peak. New data out of the UK suggests patients who test for the Omicron variant may be 50 to 70 percent less likely to be hospitalized. They do suggest that the risk of hospitalization is lower than Delta. This week, the FDA approving two antiviral pills meant to fight a COVID-19 infection. Both will require a prescription. I think it's going to end up making a really enormous difference. Long lines across the country filled with people, sometimes waiting for hours looking for a test. We have not been able to find rapid tests or any tests really anywhere. The Biden administration promising a half a billion tests, but they won't be available until after the holidays. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. All right. 
a crazy story to tell you about a quick thinking TSA officer being hailed as a hero for saving an infant who actually stopped breathing. This all happened at Newark International in New Jersey. The officer jumping over several conveyor belts when she heard cries for help. She performed the Heimlich maneuver on a two month old boy and saved him. That officer credits her training for life saving skills. How scary is that? Oh my goodness. Like super scary. She was in the right place at the right time and knew what to do. That is, I can't even imagine what mm. the mother was going through at that time, but thank goodness she was there. Mm -hmm. All right, time now, 610, 59 degrees out. Coming up a little later on on GMSA, a big time victory for our San Antonio Spurs against LeBron and the Lakers. We'll have the highlights coming up. And holiday season supposed to be a time for joy, so why are so many people struggling with their mental well-being? We're going to explain just ahead. Taking another live look outside with live cam. Foggy again. Santa's gonna, he's gonna have to use Rudolph a little bit more efficiently if he comes <laughs> through this area, but hey, it's okay. Got Justin keeping us up to date coming up after the break. From shopping, traveling, and gathering with family, the holidays are meant to be a festive time, but this season isn't always uplifting. That's right. So we are seeing more and more COVID cases around the country. The stress and feelings of hopelessness, Americans are still grappling with isolation, struggle with loved ones who are seriously ill or may have passed away because of COVID. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more in ways that you can take care of your mind, body, and soul this holiday season. The holidays are supposed to be a joyous time of the year, but for many Americans, and especially during this second straight year suffering due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this holiday season has become one of the most stressful. We're feeling this anxiety because we've lost a sense of predictability. We've lost a sense of control. Add in more than 800,000 lives lost, an especially contagious COVID-19 variant, high inflation along with the holiday travel and stress, and that's a recipe for mental and emotional distress. Dr. Pizamati, mental health professional and professor, says she's seeing it up close. I am receiving more requests for mental health help than I've ever before in my 10 years of teaching. But mental health experts say there are ways Americans can stay resilient during this holiday season. It might be important to embrace a holiday that's not traditional or not at home or not busy or not with everybody you know that you're normally with not with that stressful family member and if you do find yourself stressed there's something very powerful that happens when we name our emotions when we acknowledge what we're experiencing it it unlocks a part of the brain that starts to go into healthy problem solving it's also important to set boundaries boundaries help nurture our physical and our mental health. Boundaries help relationships thrive because they create an environment that is safe for every party involved. And finally, if you're grieving the loss of a loved one, give yourself grace. It's important to allow yourself to grieve. You don't want to suppress it. You want to experience whatever feelings that come up in a way that is authentic to you because that's all a part of the healing. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, well, back here at home, 616, 59 degrees out. We've been checking in throughout the morning with not only Justin, but also Stephen Cavazos. Yes. Uh, don't leave me out. I have a random <laughs> thought. Yes. Okay. How crazy would it be to see Santa and his reindeers touch down on the highways right now? Oh, I don't think it would be safe. People, we have to close down the highway <laughs> for Santa. We want to make sure he can land safely. And uh, But right now, we're not going to encounter any big problems. He could probably do that, but uh, we still have a few folks out there. We told you about a crash off 35 at Division Avenue and we have some good news. Looks like our first responders were able to clear that out. So uh, shout out to them uh, and hopefully that driver is OK. But let's take a quick look around town 37 and I 10 traffic is getting moving, but it is very, very light uh, for Christmas Eve morning. So it's a great way to start the holiday. But let's take you right to the map because that crash was detected right here again. 35 northbound at Division Avenue no longer there, but we still look at some uh, fog there according to our road weather map. Wider look does show it's still pretty much green on the screen and we love Love to say that for a holiday morning. So if you're still at home, enjoy these nice views of these empty roadways. But Justin, it's going to be a hot one, a warm one, maybe.
Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, well above average, that's for sure. We could see some 80s on the map today, which I don't know if that's going to make Santa happy, but that's uh, that's the situation. Let's track Santa. We have the latest on where he is using NORAD. Uh, we have been tracking him most of the morning. He was last seen in Queenstown, New Zealand. He has already delivered more than 400 million presents, actually to be exact, 430 million, 500, and, well, let's just count, it's still going, uh, 431, we'll go with that. <laughs> I can't count that fast. Uh, his next stop is Fiji. He'll be there in about three minutes. So he's out in the Pacific now, uh, hitting some of those uh, Pacific islands. Let's talk about the forecast, naughty or nice. On the nice list, we get some afternoon sun, quiet Texas travel weather. That's always a good thing. Really, the state of Texas looks good if you're going to be on the roads today. Not so nice. It will be warm, as Stephen mentioned. And morning fog and drizzle, muggy. That's what we're dealing with now. We'll also be dealing with that tomorrow morning and probably Sunday morning, too. So, you know, if we're rating this, I think it lands somewhere more towards the naughty side. It depends on what you, how you feel about the warm weather. I don't mind it so much, but I know a lot of people are, uh, would rather be dealing with some, some cool weather. The forecast site today is 78. The record high is 83. But keep in mind, the average is 64. So we're running about 15, 14, 15 degrees above average here. Uh, the high temperature forecast in Del Rio today, 82. The record is 89. So I don't think we'll be setting any records, but we'll be in range of some of those records. 59 Bernie State, 62 right now in Comfort, 59 Hondo, 61 Carissa Springs, 60 in Catula. And again, looking outside right now, 60 degrees and cloudy. That dew point is at 59. And there's some of that fog. It's fairly thick, stretching from Port S.A., Stinson, Randolph, up to New Braunfels. So kind of up and down I-35, although around the airport, it is still okay. Pleasanton, quarter of a mile there uh, with some fog being reported. As we look at the big picture here, a lot of rain, snow out west, high pressure sitting over parts of Mexico. This is not going to move over top of us, but there's enough here where it's influencing our forecast and kind of deflecting things to the north, keeping fronts from dropping south, and this uh, keeps us warm. Forecast for today, 78. There will be some 80s on the map across parts of Texas. There could be some records broken as you get up towards San Angelo, Abilene, and Wichita Falls. And then tomorrow, Potentially even warmer. Places like Laredo could get up close to 90 for Christmas Day, if you can wrap your mind around that. So here's what our forecast looks like. Uh, overnight lows will be around 60. We'll be in the 80s this weekend. 79 Monday, 80 on Tuesday. Some morning clouds. Pattern doesn't change much. It is unusually warm as we finish out December, guys. So it may be that perfect weather where it's mm. too cold to go swimming, but it's jacuzzi weather, right? Okay. I'm going to be honest, 82 is warm enough for me to go well, swimming. Well, it's good night, though, you know? Oh, yeah. I got gotcha. you. in the jacuzzi at night. <laughs> Justin Orr, thank you so much. <laughs> Time now, just about 621, 59 degrees out. Coming up, if you're still doing your holiday shopping, you're pretty much down to the wire now. And we'll show you about a new kind of holiday shopping. We're talking through live streaming. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. This Essay Salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro. Hi, my name is Michelle from Walk On, so I just want to wish all the retired military happy holidays and my family as well. Thousands of women with metastatic breast cancer are living in the moment and taking eye brands. Eye brands with an aromatase inhibitor is for postmenopausal women or for men with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer as the first hormonal based therapy. Eye brands plus letrozole significantly delayed disease progression versus letrozole. Eye brands may cause low white blood cell counts that may lead to serious infections. Eye brands may cause severe inflammation of the lungs. Both of these can lead to death. Tell your doctor if you have new or worsening chest pain, cough, or trouble breathing. Before taking eye brands, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, are or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding. For more information about side effects, talk to your doctor. Be in your moment. Ask your doctor about eye brands.
In this morning's GMA First Look, some last minute buying all at your fingertips. We're talking about the newest wave of shopping through live streaming. Hey, you're gonna love it. What I love about live streaming is that it's a way for the consumers, the viewers to watch you try on and talk about products while having that immediate response with feedback with their questions. Players include emerging apps like Network, Pop Shop Live, and Super Great. It's similar to actual home shopping TV channels. There's a host who highlights products, but there are some major differences too. And guys, we are streaming on my own personal channel today. You can actually just be scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through TikTok and see an announcement that maybe your favorite tech products, maybe your favorite home products are going to go on deal. Coming up at 8 a.m., we'll have more on how this kind of shopping can make your life easier. With your GMA First Look, I'm Zoreen Shah, ABC News Los Angeles. Time now, 625, 59 degrees. All right, still ahead on GMSA. Gunfire inside a mall in Chicago. We have the latest. And the search for three-year-old Lena Kill grows more and more desperate as time goes by. The reward information on her whereabouts increasing. We'll have the latest. And a live look out at the roadways. Okay, nothing in that shot right there, but it has been a quite busy morning so far. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos in just a bit. The search continues for three-year-old Lena Kill, and the cash reward is going up details coming up next and yeah, taking a live look out at the Alamo City 59 degrees for a warm Christmas Eve what is Christmas Day what does the rest of the weekend look like we're gonna check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments but first I want to say good morning and Merry Christmas Eve as you can look we are in the theme with mm -hmm. our outfits that's right so thank you so much for starting your morning with us if you are awake thank you we got a lot to talk about but first and foremost we got Justin Horn talking about the weather and talking about Santa. Well, you know what I appreciate is that Jaffney is here and she can she can sing. She's been singing some Christmas music Ooh, for us. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, no I don't. Want <laughs> but we're in the spirit here, and it is Christmas Eve. We've been tracking Santa. We're going to have more on where Santa is coming up here in just a bit. I want to show you the time lapse. And uh, this is over the last several hours. You can see the fog trying to kind of work in. Here we go. The visibility drops off a little bit right there at the end. That's where we stand right now. We've got the fog building in 60 degrees. Cloudy skies, southerly winds at about five miles per hour. Dew point is at 59. Uh, there's a look at the visibility. It's been down across mainly southern Bear County, uh, Stinson, Port SA right now at the moment. That's where the fog is thickest. Also around New Braunfels, Pleasanton, and now Kennedy starting to see some fog. And as you know, with fog, it, it's uh, it's going to move around a little bit. We'll see these visibilities come up, come down. But uh, here around San Antonio, it, it's possibility through the morning hours. 60, Fredericksburg, 59, Hondo, 58, Gonzales, 61, and Beeville. And the forecast for today, yes, we will start off cloudy, but then the, uh, the sun comes out around midday. And then we're closing in on the... 80 degree mark by this afternoon. So well above average. Another really warm day and tomorrow even warmer. Uh, we haven't had a lot of issues on the roads. Not a lot of people driving this morning, but there is some fog out there. Stephen, are, are any issues popping up on your screen? You know, thankfully, Justin, we're not seeing any problems. So we did have some issues earlier that look like they've finally cleared out or qu cleared out quickly, I should say. Uh, but check out US 90 at Callahan. We do have a few more drivers out on the roadway this early, but uh, not a lot at 630 for a holiday. We, we love to see this now again, quiet roadway. So for whatever reason you have to head out, you're not going to find any problems. But if you want to grab that cup of coffee, that's probably where you may find those delays and the coffee lines there. But right now things are pretty quiet. You US 90 Nogalitos, just a few folks out there, uh, but on any ordinary day, we'd probably see a lot more. Uh, now, we did have this crash here off 35 Northbound at Division Avenue. That has since cleared out. Need to wipe that from our roadmap, but as Justin mentioned, that fog is still present. We're seeing it there on our road weather map. Whenever you see that orange, that does indicate that it is a little foggy out there, so use those low beams if you have to travel. So, if you have to travel to San Antonio, again, green across the board, and I think, I feel like we look kind of holiday-esque here with all the green and then the red blazer. I love it. So, it is looking very cheerful out there so no big delays if you have to travel into san antonio but one last look around town 35 north at loop 410 it's been a quiet morning so our gift to you guys thank you steven now to the ongoing search for lena keel the islamic center of san antonio raising a hundred thousand dollars and crime stoppers adding another fifty thousand dollars for any information that might lead to the three-year-old's whereabouts a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in total for reward 
any information to help find this three year old. Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the apartment community where Lena was last seen. Good morning, Jonathan. Now, what's the latest on all of the search efforts? Good morning, Jaffney. Well, crews are still actively searching for Lena. They're going, uh, checking in with nearby businesses and going door by door to each apartment unit here at Las Villas del Cabo, location where Lena was last seen. We've learned, of course, that Lena disappeared from this apartment unit located, this these apartment com community located on the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road near Medical Center on the city's northwest side. Of course, we've been seeing FBI agents knocking on doors at the complex. FBI showed up and they searched my apartment, looking under the bed, under the couch, outside, and they had this questionnaire going through questions. Would you be willing to give a DNA sample if needed? Max, Jeff, and important to mention that police are still treating this as a missing person and not a child abduction crime. Again, if anyone has any information that can lead to Lena's whereabouts, you're asked to call SAPD's missing person unit at 207-7660. Reporting live from the city's northwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Now we're learning more about the victim of a shooting and her road to recovery. Alana Castaneda was shot in the face almost two months ago at the Alamo Quarry Market in an attempted carjacking. Right now, she's been focusing on physical therapy, working to loosen the scar tissue in her jaw from the gunshot so she can open it fully. Alana has also spent some time reflecting on her life since the incident, and she says approaching it is, she's, is differently. I'm readjusting and my life has completely changed. So I kind of want to see what this one's all about. The most meaningful thing is spending time with their friends and family. I mean, that's, that's life. Alana's doctors say that when she's healed further, she'll have another surgery to fix problems that could get to initially. Well, a dishonorable discharge for a Bear County sergeant. He is now accused of acting inappropriately during a sting operation. Now, case 12 defenders reporting that same Sergeant Anthony Daggett retiring in lieu of this termination. The 22 year veteran placed on administrative leave just this past Monday. Two sources familiar with the investigation telling the defenders Daggett is accused of tipping off the owner of a massage parlor involved in the sting operation. And that includes telling the owner which make and model that vehicles that officers were using to watch their business. The Texas Board of Pardon and Paroles is withdrawing the pardon after death recommendation for George Floyd. The same board recommended the pardon last October. It would have been for the time Floyd was arrested over drugs in Houston back in 2004. The board also withdrew clemency recommendations for two dozen other people today. All right, a terrifying situation inside a Chicago area mall. Police responding to a call for shots fired. So take a look. Oak Brook police confirming shots were fired inside this mall last night. They did not say what led up to the shooting. One person was taken in an ambulance, put on a stretcher. Not clear if that person was injured by gunfire or in another way. Some mall, put, uh, mall shoppers posted about the situation on social media, saying that they were actually locked down inside stores. Now, this is clearly an updating situation, so make sure to stay with us online and on air for any updates. Severe weather has made for some hazardous driving conditions in parts of the nation. That's right. As CNN's Reed Binion reports, the poor conditions led to at least one death in one state and crashes involving dozens of vehicles in another. I saw an explosion. Is what I saw, I will remember forever. That's for sure. A motorist recounting the terrifying moments that played out on an icy freeway in Wisconsin Thursday. Authorities had to shut down a roughly 25 mile stretch of Interstate 94 in both directions after multiple crashes involving about 40 vehicles, including a number of tractor trailers. Officials say icy conditions caused by freezing rain are to blame. According to Wisconsin State Patrol, some individuals were hospitalized with minor injuries, but no deaths were reported. Sadly, that wasn't the case in California where two people died Thursday when the car they were in became trapped and submerged in an underpass that flooded amid heavy rain. It's very shocking. My heart goes out to their families. 
Authorities say crews were able to rescue two people from another vehicle under the overpass, but were unable to save two others. The water was rising so fast, uh, conditions were changing so rapidly, even for, for first responders, they, they, it became too dangerous for them, so they had to retreat. Elsewhere in California, floodwaters had sections of the 101 looking more like a waterway than a highway, prompting authorities to shut parts of it down for several hours. I'm Reed Binion reporting. So the coronavirus, we're keeping an eye on the latest COVID numbers here in Bear County. Look at your screen, 376 new cases. That's up more than 200 since the last report, which brings the seven day moving average to 319. Four new deaths are being reported. Meanwhile, 200 people in our local hospitals. That's an increase of 18 people of those in our hospital. 77 in the ICU, 44 on ventilators. Sticking to the pandemic, two major airlines have canceled flights just before Christmas Eve. United Airlines said it had to cancel some flights because of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. It said the nationwide spike in cases this week has had a direct impact on its flight crews and the people who run its operations. The flight tracking site Flightware says United canceled more than 100 flights scheduled for today. Delta Airlines is also canceling flights with 93 Christmas Eve flights no longer in the books. According to FlySanAntonio.com, one Delta flight to and from San Antonio from Los Angeles has been canceled for today. Delta said that the cancellations are due to multiple issues, including the Omicron variant. And speaking of the Omicron variant, revelers ringing in the new year at Times Square in New York City. You will now need to mask up. Mayor Bill de Blasio announced plans for a scaled back celebration as the Omicron variant of COVID spreads at a rapid record pace nationwide. 58,000 people usually attend the ball drop in NYC. This year, it will be limited to 15,000. Everyone over the age of five years old must be fully vaccinated. Time now is 639, 59 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, how to turn those clothes you don't wear anymore into a little extra cash. That's after the break. Good morning and welcome back. For many people, work wardrobes have been sitting idle since March of 2020 when the pandemic pretty much shut down the world. I'm guilty of that. And as Erica Hernandez explains, with many still working remotely, now may be the best time to cash in some of that clothing. CNBC recently took a look at ways you can turn items in your closet into cash. Online marketplaces make the process easy. TradeZ, Poshmark, and ThreadUp are all options for selling your clothing. If you rather do things in person, consignment shops are an option. Those items are usually priced anywhere from 25 to 75 percent of their original cost. A good place to start is the website for the Association of Resale Professionals. There you can search for a store or even the type of merchandise by zip code. Garage sales are also an option, but you'll need to offer a wide array of items in order to attract a range of buyers. One big plus for garage sales, the chance to capitalize on shoppers' impulsive urges. People may stop to browse and end up leaving with unexpected treasures. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right, 644, 60 degrees out. It is Christmas Eve. I almost said New Year's Eve. Right. It is Christmas Eve. So, Stephen Cavazos, are there a lot of people out and about? Uh, you know, I was actually just looking at our TransGuide cameras here. We have about 20 views uh, right next to me, and they're all quiet, so that's nice. 644, we don't normally see this, but it is the holiday. Let's take a quick look here at the roadways. There is 37 at Carolina. We have maybe one or two folks out on the road, but if you're at home, good for you. Enjoy that. But if you have to head out the door, grab that cup of coffee or hot chocolate. We had this discussion a little bit earlier in the week. You can do that as well. That's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look right now at our map because we have a stall right there off I-35 southbound at Loop 1604 near Vaughn. Army, uh, but all that orange still shows that we got a little bit of fog out there, so just use some caution heading out there. Uh, but as we take a wider look, it's just green on the screen, and we love to say that, especially for a day like today. If you have to perhaps maybe head out the door or head to the grocery store, coffee line, wherever you're going, make sure you take it easy out on the roads, guys. You know, with the temperatures, we may need to drop some ice cubes in that coffee. <laughs> ice I have coffee. Never, have you ever had iced hot cocoa? Well, it's not hot anymore. I guess it's just iced. Isn't it just chocolate, chocolate melt? It's, yeah, just chocolate, chocolate melt. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> Either way, it's good. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be that kind of day, guys. But the, the heat, the way it is, temperatures are going to be well above average. I think we're going to be setting some records. Not so much here, but parts of Texas will be. Uh, 
setting some records, I think, this afternoon. Of course, all morning long, we've been tracking Santa. We've got the latest for you. He's just made a stop in Micronesia. He's delivered over 550 million presents here. So he's still out over the Pacific uh, making quick work of this. Uh, he has to work fast, but obviously he won't be here into uh, San Antonio and Texas until tonight. We'll be tracking him all day long. He's got uh, a lot of the world to get to before uh, he gets to us. So that's the latest there. What is it going to look like Christmas morning? Around 60 degrees, foggy. He may need Rudolph to help him out a little bit because we're expecting some of that fog to develop. Uh, it will be warm. This is well above average, obviously, for Christmas Day. Winds be out of the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then we'll see some sun Christmas afternoon. Yesterday, temperatures were extremely warm, especially here in Texas. What we're looking at here is the departure from average. So how warm that temperature was above our average temperature. And you can see most places were 10 to 15 degrees above average. Here in San Antonio, we were only eight, but I think we'll be higher than that today. Our average is in the mid 60s. We're forecasting temperatures up close to 80. There's a look at some of the watches and warnings across the state, and I point this out because there are some high wind red flag warnings for the Panhandle in North Texas. There could be some serious fire concerns there today. Gusty winds, very dry conditions, and uh, warm too, so that's not a good combination. For us, uh, we have been dealing with some fog, although this picture doesn't show much. 60 degrees at the airport, 55 Stinson, 57 at Kelly, 57 at Randolph too, and uh, dew points are close to 60. Visibility still down, same spots, Port S.A., Stinson, Pleasanton, up towards New Braunfels. That's where the fog has been centered this morning, and it is getting thick in a few spots. 60 to go, uh, 60 is a popular number here to go around. Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Hondo, Uvalde here in San Antonio. Some 50s from Pleasanton to Gonzales, but a warm, somewhat muggy morning, at least by December standards. And as you look at the dew point forecast, it stays right there in the muggy territory all the way into next week, which is very unusual for late December. Typically, we get a front through here that would at least drop those dew points some. Just not happening. Maybe, maybe as we get into the new year, we will get a front through here and it will cool things down some. Still very active out west. A lot of rain around Phoenix, a lot of snow in the uh, Rocky Mountains, uh, trying to shift towards the Denver area. So if there's going to be any travel delays today, once again, that's where they'll be out west. Our forecast, 81 degrees tomorrow, 82 on Sunday. Morning fall clouds, maybe a little bit of drizzle out there too. And then uh, some clouds next week in the morning, but still a lot of afternoon sun and a lot of warm temperatures. Uh, just impressive, honestly, to, to see this kind of forecast uh, going forward. It's, uh, it's just very unusual. That's all I can say. It's, it's gonna probably set some records for one of our warmest Decembers ever. I love how old school Santa Claus is. I'm pretty sure there's a button he can push that makes the presents, you know, magically appear mm. under Christmas trees around the world. Mm -hmm. But he gets out. He gets out and about. He does. He's, uh, he's good at what he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Justin Hart. Thank you so much. You know who is else? He's good at what they do. The San Antonio Spurs. So after two days rest in Los Angeles, San Antonio Spurs hoping to end their four game road trip with a W taking on LeBron and the Lakers last night. Silver and Black doing exactly that. Taking care of business to say the least. He debates the up KBD scoring a career high 30 points, really going head to head with LeBron, leading the team to a 138 110 victory over the Lakers. Spurs now winning back to back games since get this the first time since December 4th. Remember, they just beat the Clippers. So up next, the Spurs trying to make it three in a row. They are hosting the Detroit Pistons tip off for the game set for six o'clock this Sunday evening. Pro football coverage powered by Davis. Congrats, Lawford. Cowboys fans. You're officially in the playoffs. So, still three games left in the regular season, starting with this primetime Sunday night football matchup, taking on the Washington football team. But with the 49ers losing last night, the Cowboys have clinched a playoff spot. The stage is set, the NFC East on the line for the Cowboys this Sunday, kickoff set for 720. And here we go. If we're talking football, we got to talk Alamo Dome. Get a behind the scenes look at the Alamo Dome. Crew starting to paint the field for the 2021 Valero Alamo Bowl. That is where the Sooners making their first ever appearance in the major sporting event right here in the Alamo City. While the Oregon Ducks, they're actually making their third appearance at the Alamo Dome. All right, the game taking place Wednesday in the Dome. Both teams led by interim coaches. The Sooners coming to San Antonio in today. The Ducks tomorrow. There you go, Duva. Horse in the race, Sooners, Ducks. 
I don't, I, I'm whoever wins. There you go. There you go. Jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> Love it. 650, 60 degrees out. Well, there's no GMSA tomorrow. We're off for Christmas, Woo. but coming up on Sunday on GMSA, we'll introduce you to a woman who went from dumpster diving to earning a PhD. Oh. All right, taking one quick live look at the Alamo City. It's been patchy fog throughout the morning. Hopefully that clears up. We're going to give one last check in with Stephen Cavazos and Justin Horn when we come back. Coming up here on GMA, COVID plus holiday travel means some chaos. Some airlines canceling hundreds of flights. So we're going to tell you about the impact that that's happening this morning. Plus a look at the roads where more than 100 million Americans are expected to be this holiday weekend. As the variant upends some holiday celebrations, New York City scaling back its Times Square party. We're going to have the latest on that and so much more right here on GMA. The Islamic Center of San Antonio has now raised $100,000 and Crime Stoppers is now offering $50,000 for anyone who has information that can lead to Lena's whereabouts. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. We know crews are still actively searching the area, going to nearby businesses in search for Lena Keel. The three-year-old disappeared on Monday evening from these apartments in the 9400 block of Fredericksburg Road near Medical Center on the city's northwest side. Yesterday, FBI agents were seen knocking on doors at the complex. At this time, police are still treating this case as a missing person and not a child abduction crime. Again, we want to remind you, if you have any information that can help authorities find Lena, you're asked to call SAPD's missing person unit at 207-7660. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. I know millions are expected to take to the streets for their holiday travel, but for right now, it seems a bit peaceful. Yeah, I would say, let's say jolly today because it's pretty quiet and it is Christmas Eve morning. So jolly roadways right now. If you plan to head out to anyone at uh, Hildebrand, we have US 90 no Golitos. Few folks out there, uh, but again, it's expected with the holidays. Not a lot of travel, but uh, here in town, that is I-35 South on watch out. We have a stall to take there off Loop 1604. Jump up over here shows another solve 21 northbound at Grayson Street, Justin. Thanks, Stephen. I think it's fair to say the fog is not as thick as it was yesterday morning. We'll probably lose that cloud cover just a little bit earlier today, and that means temperatures up to 78 for a high on your Christmas Eve, even warmer. So we get into tomorrow, the Christmas morning, right around 60 degrees. There could be some more fog tomorrow morning, and then we get into the 80s for Christmas Day, guys. So some warm <laughs> weather for the holidays. All right, Justin Horn, Steve McVazos, Daphne Gray, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We'll That's see you back here for GMSA at 9.